Electronic devices like cell phones, laptops, and gaming consoles have impacted the ways millions of people around the world communicate and connect with one another. While innovations in electronics have contributed greatly to modern life, we'd like to remind the electronics industry that manufacturing their products has helped to fuel one of the world's bloodiest conflicts. Electronics requires specific mineral inputs such as tin, tungsten, and tantalum, also known as the three T's. These minerals are often sourced from mines in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. The trade of these conflict minerals is fueling a conflict in which five million people have died. Millions more have been displaced and local populations have been devastated by sexual violence. The violence is perpetrated by the government and militant insurgent groups who control many of the mines and transport routes in the province of Kivu. These groups are often affiliated with rebel groups such as M23 or rogue units of the National Army of the DRC. They use various methods to extort revenue from mines and other mineral traders in the region. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, around 3 million people have been forced out of their homes. Some live with host families, some in camps, while others hide in the bush. Many of the displaced have dropped out of sight and are thus deprived of state-provided services and humanitarian aid. Augustin fled with his wife and seven children and came to Walikale in North Kivu. We were forced to carry each other on our backs like safari ants. The eldest carry the little ones. I carry one, their mother carries the other. The pace isn't the same. That's how I got here. On March the 3rd, Médecins Sans Frontières published a report denouncing the silent suffering of the Congolese people. The situation in the east of the country is giving even more cause for concern, as the most vulnerable are deprived of the medical care they so desperately need. As I speak, there are many women, victims of rape, who are pregnant and are due to give birth. Many come to hospital very late because they stay at home too long, unable to raise enough money for treatment. MSF's report features medical data and patient and health worker stories assembled during its many years in the region. The organization has called for immediate action to put an end to the suffering of the Congolese people. One of the services we provide at the hospital is assisting victims of sexual violence. In terms of treatment, first there's post-exposure HIV AIDS prophylaxis. We also treat sexually transmitted infections and prescribe the morning after pill, which is a contraceptive. We offer immunization against hepatitis B and tetanus and psychological support to people who need it. One of these women's biggest concerns is being able to go to the fields to get food. But armed gangs lie in wait and sexually assault them. And they're also assaulted when these gangs loot their homes. We've had the impression recently that many women are downplaying the situation. If they're raped once and then again and again, the third time they often don't seek medical attention. They say, no, it happens. How many times am I going to see the doctor? We broadcast radio messages and go to the schools and churches to reach out to them, raise awareness, to encourage them to come for treatment. Electronic companies can limit the use of conflict minerals by implementing due diligence measures and working closely with other actors in the industry. These measures have the ability to improve every step of the supply chain and can be done in a cost-effective manner. Let's break down the supply chain. 
Miners extract these minerals amidst brutal working conditions. These mines are often controlled by rebel groups, who use their profits from the mineral trade to fund the conflict. The raw minerals are then transported to comptoirs, who export the minerals to countries surrounding the DRC. Lack of oversight and legal loopholes allow comptoirs to mix conflict minerals with certified conflict-free minerals, making them more difficult to trace. Transit countries like Rwanda and Uganda that border the DRC import the raw minerals before exporting them abroad for further processing. This makes it harder to trace the mineral's origin. Overseas smelters and refineries receive the raw minerals from the transit countries. Identifying these minerals' origins becomes impossible after they are processed in these factories. Finally, electronics companies purchase these refined minerals and manufacture them into components for consumer electronics. Outside the DRC, the U.S. has attempted to stem the flow of conflict minerals through the Dodd-Frank Act, which requires that companies determine and report whether or not they source the three Ts from conflict areas. In the private sector, certification schemes have been set up to track conflict-free practices. Groups like EICC, GESI, and ITRI have provided detailed recommendations for avoiding conflict minerals through these schemes via supply chains tracing and tagging minerals from the source. Companies like Intel and Nokia have provided due diligence models for others to emulate in an attempt to limit the use of conflict minerals. Companies can verify that their minerals are conflict-free across all points of the supply chain by enrolling in certification schemes and using these resources. The security situation in the DRC evolves rapidly. Legitimate operations can be quickly taken over by armed groups. Due diligence requires constant observation of the situation on the ground, adapting your supply routes, and working with your partners in the industry in order to be effective. We have provided resources your company can use to develop its own due diligence practices, including the EICC and GESI's list of conflict-free smelters, the ITRI's tin tagging program, the OECD due diligence guide, the specific terms of the Dodd-Frank Act, and the UN Security Council's report on rebel activity in the Eastern DRC. You can also use up-to-date information about the supply chain to develop an integrated way to ship minerals directly from the non-conflict mines to ports to smelters in order to bypass the smugglers and comptoirs. In addition to reducing shipping costs, better transport infrastructure can prevent conflict minerals from being introduced to the supply. Ensure future demand for non-conflict minerals with futures contracts, locking in purchases of non-conflict minerals over a certain number of years at fixed prices. This guarantees legitimate mining companies' future revenues and allows smelters a steady stream of non-conflict minerals. Once all of this is implemented, publish the results of your due diligence practices to allow your consumers to make more informed decisions. As the last and most powerful link in the supply chain, you have the power to demand conflict-free minerals from all your upstream suppliers. Your company can help stop the violence in the DRC and end the trade of conflict minerals.